I'm a fool But tell me why am I having so much fun Come out! <laughs>
the water might rise and the waves may soar, but I'm
Hey, it's good to see you tonight. This is a, a wonderful treat for all of us being from Mississippi. Y'all do know where Mississippi is. It's so far that way that I don't, I tell you, I didn't think we was ever going to get here, but we're so happy to be here. And I've heard how beautiful Canada was, and we've been to the west side of Canada, but I, I couldn't visualize how beautiful it really is here. And I, I was thinking last night as I was praying, I was looking at the sunset, and I was thinking, man, it just don't look like that in Mississippi. And the green grass just looks so much greener than what it does in Mississippi. And I have a brother-in-law that's um, from about an hour from here. Does anybody know Lloyd Bustard around these parts? Uh, he's here tonight and his family and uh, Brother Lloyd's mother is here. And we want to welcome her and we love all of you. And uh, as I was saying, the beautiful sunset. How many of y'all saw that sunset? I was thinking, I bet there's nobody around here that even looking at that and imagine how beautiful that really is. I mean, it was just like the Lord painted something beautiful for, I guess, me to see. But I saw it and I'm glad that you're here and I'm glad that the Lord is here and I know he's going to do great things in this place tonight. Hallelujah. And we love you and for those that this is, how many of this is your first time to ever come to this church? Your first time ever. Just lift your hands up. Or welcome. Let's welcome all these wonderful folks. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Children of God loves everybody. I don't care what you look like or where you've been, what you've done. It don't matter. People of God loves everybody. I got invited out to a church so similar to this, it, it just brings back so many sweet memories that the first time I got invited to come to a church like this, I was uh, 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 known as a town hippie, known as a town rock and roller, you know. I'd been out there with people like Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones. I'd been in the studio with those guys. I'd been there with Rod Stewart when he was recording. I'd been with Stevie Wonder. We played with groups like Sticks, uh, the guy that was... Uh, on tour with, uh, I forget their name right now, but Tommy Aldridge used to be our drummer in Black Oak, Arkansas. We, we were on tour with so many of these people and we saw the emptiness that, that the world had to offer, but we didn't know what it was really what we were looking for. We thought it was drugs and we tried all that stuff and it only led to me getting busted and that ain't a lot of fun in Mississippi. You know what I mean. But I got invited out one night and I put on my Elton John platforms. Y'all remember them? I was about five foot seven, but the time I got through putting them things on, I was about six feet. I like that. And so I went out there this particular night and this little pest. I mean, how many of y'all are here tonight that, that you know what I'm talking about? Somebody kept inviting you, inviting you. They wouldn't get off your back till you came. Thank God for pests. At the time, I didn't know what I was thinking, though, but this guy kept, you know, saying, you've got to come just one time. Well, to get him off my back, I went, I thought, just one time. And I heard about these crazy churches. I mean, I heard they got so happy that they'd swing from the chandeliers. And they just jumped the pew. I heard all kind of crazy tales just to keep me from going out there. Well, I got out there, y'all, and the night before now, mind you, I was in a bar room playing rock and roll. We played colleges, and we played these concerts, and we played bar rooms. And so the night before, I, you know, I, was, I had to get all tanked up, and you've got to pay all this money, all these people do to come in. and. And, and, and you see them, they look like they're happy, but really they're not happy. And here I was inside a church. Everybody looked like they was happy, except me. And the only thing I was doing was spectating. I was wondering, either I'm crazy or this whole bunch is crazy. I mean, they're all getting happy. The liveliest ones in the church always sits down on the front row, normally. But this particular night, the Lord put her on the back seat with me. Thank you, Jesus. 
Now, the preacher said, let's all just clap our hands to Jesus. And I, I didn't know what a lot of pride was, but I, I was eat up with it. And I was thinking, now, hey, I don't go to church here, and I don't really know what's going on. And I'm just a visitor, and so I'll just stick my hands in my pocket. And so this little lady I was sitting beside, y'all remember me telling you she was lively? Hey, she was pushing 80, but man, when she got to moving, you know there was something else walking in her shoes. So the preacher said, let's clap our hands. And so, you know, I was just there you know, checking everything out. And I looked over to her and she looked over at me and she gave me a nod like, go ahead, it'll be all right. And I gave her a nod like, no, it ain't all right either. And she said, she was so persistent. I said, well, I get off my back. I'll go ahead and clap my hands. And you know, I had recognized all night long. I had really wanted to clap my hands. Every time they play a song, I would just have to fight my own self to keep from clapping my hands. And so, there I went. I got to doing it a while. I must have felt something because it, it just felt right that if I could clap my hands at baseball games and football games, shouldn't I do it for Jesus? So there I was, y'all. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ain't nothing wrong with worshiping and praising God. Hallelujah. And then the song got over and I was the only one. This ain't you, man. You're supposed to be cool. What if all your rock and roll band could see you right now? What if all your friends knew where you were this Sunday night? Ain't right. Then the preacher said, Let's all just lift our hands to Jesus. There ain't no way, Lord. I'll go that far, but that's it. Uh-oh. There she went. And there I went. I'm shy. She said, I said, Lord, I guess I'll do this and I'm going to get out of here. Y'all remember your first time? Wow, that was a trip. I said, Lord, I need some help. I got him up there. I said, Lord, if you just get me out of here, I ain't ever going to come back again. Till next Sunday. Well, people was coming around hugging my neck and you don't do that where I came from. But I knew somebody that loved me. I knew somebody knew that I needed more than what the devil could offer. And I knew that God had led me. But not that night. It took a matter of a little time and a little convincing. Three car wrecks and getting busted. I threw in the towel and I'm so happy to tell my brothers and sisters that we saw in the scriptures and my brother received by divine revelation to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank God for his revelation on his light of his word. And I can say thank you Jesus that he baptized me with the Holy Ghost. I went to all my smoking dope buddies and told them all about it. I went to all my friends, but you know, a lot of folks don't understand. But I believe it's a, a divine appointment that everybody is here tonight that we can get on a distant journey. Are you on a distant journey tonight, y'all? <laughs> Come on, everybody, now. Take a little trip with me. I don't bother me with philosophy. A humanistic wisdom I can't see. I'm just ordinary people. But I'm on the prize. 
may be seated. I'd like to uh, introduce some folks to you. Well, I first want to start off with the one that means everything and the most. He's the first and last. His name is Jesus Christ. Praise God. On the soundboard is Kelly's husband, there Scott. On the lights tonight is Michael. Bus drivers burn. I know y'all heard a lot of things about the poor people in Mississippi. And you're looking at some of the poorest, richest folks in the whole world. They may not have a lot of earthly goods, but the treasures that are set before us in a place called heaven so overwhelming and we're rich through him through faith and being brought up a little country boy in Mississippi we were born in a little three room shack and my daddy was a farmer and he hauled logs for a living and times were awful tough but God always saw us through each winter and each summer and I've learned a lot since those early days. We now have electricity, and we didn't back then. And you know, we can survive without a lot of things. We didn't have a car back then. We had no log truck. And we can live and survive without a lot of things in this world. But we can't live without Jesus Christ. It's more than a feeling 
some wonderful folks the Harden family I understand they were just here with this church just recently and we certainly love those special folks they're some of the most precious people that has ever come into my life and I know you love them too and we want to welcome Mindy here tonight some other folks you met my daughter Kelly Huff and this is her brother and my son on the drums back there that's Lance Huff and his wife Crystal is here with us Praise God. To introduce our next song is my brother over here, and we do come from Mississippi. And do we talk a little slower than y'all? Okay. That's my brother, Claiborne Huff, on the bass guitar. Praise God. I think the only difference that I've picked up is y'all say A, and we say y'all. Just a little bit of difference. But it's good that we serve the same Jesus in Mississippi that y'all do up here. Isn't it good to know that Jesus lives everywhere? That he's not a respected person? That he loves even y'all as much as he does us Mississippians? <laughs> but it's good to know Jesus. Do you know Jesus tonight? If you know Jesus, you know everything. If you don't know Jesus, you're missing everything. And I believe this night that God has ordained from the foundation of the world. Do y'all believe that? Do y'all have faith in God to believe that there's no accidents in God? You know, we have some, some musicians here, some rock groups that came in here tonight, and I, I just want to welcome every one of the musicians. And I'm just, It was one guy that uh, was an electrician. He's in a, in a country rock band. Is that right? 
And we're just so welcome that all of y'all come out to it, to hear us Mississippians, fellow musicians. And it's good to know that Jesus has a destination for every one of us, and he has a plan for every one of us. Sometimes we miss his plan but not recognize him. Ain't that right? Even the Jewish people, when Jesus came, they didn't get the blessings of God because they didn't recognize him in the midst and know that God was there to do mighty and great things. And I believe God's here tonight to do mighty and great things in our midst. I believe that with all my heart. And we must move in faith right now, knowing that God is here and he's going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think or even ask. God is here to do it. Do y'all believe that? As I was meditating on the Lord last night, the Lord spoke to me a strange thing, and I didn't understand it, and I still don't understand it, but he was talking about somebody that's in the, a solar, he said something about a solar uh, units. They were, met, they were involved in that, and because they got involved in that, then they were, they were extremely blessed. And I don't know anybody that's in that kind of stuff. But God does. And I was meditating on it later. I was thinking, is that a natural thing or was that something spiritual? Because we understand that the God of the universe, you know, we understand about those solar things. They can bring the, the sun down into it because that's the giver of all life. Ain't that right? If you don't have the sun, you'll die because you, there won't be no plants. There won't be anything on this earth without the sun. And that same universe Jesus said he was the light of the world. He came into this world. And that same light that gives energy to the world can come and live in your body. And you can store it up. Is that right? By the Holy Ghost and with fire. And I know that God's here to this night to do things in people's lives. You know, before we came to the Lord, me and my twin, uh, I'm, I'm going to make this real short is uh, my brother David was in a different group than we were, and we had our own group. Anyway, my wife, I was in them clubs, and nobody told me about Jesus in those clubs. And then if, even if somebody wanted to say something about Jesus to me, I would just, if somebody said that over got religious, I'd say, man, I don't want to talk to him. I was just that stern uh, against Christianity. Anyway, my wife ran off, and I, I wasn't even thinking about God. And so anyway, I, my twin brother moved in the house with me, and we was there doing a lot of drugs, and I was staying stoned and loaded all the time. Wasn't even thinking about God. And uh, so anyway, uh, to get me over my depression, my twin brother just kept us loaded. We all stayed loaded on drugs all the time. And anyway, I had this girl to move into the house with me. And uh, I met her in this club, and her name was Mandy. So anyway, as she moved in the house with me, I sure wasn't thinking about God. <laughs> so anyway, uh, she was asleep one night in, in the room in there. And anyway, David had started reading the Bible a little bit. And, and he just told my twin brother, he said, You know, Rayburn, it's more to the Bible than what people has told us. And when Rayburn heard that, he said, Man, I don't want to hear it. He really didn't. So anyway, that night he was in there and on the couch and I was in the room in there. And so and Rayburn was in there smoking a little joint. Had a bottle of wine, just kind of enjoying himself, he thought. And he looked up on the shelf and he saw something on there that I think we must have picked up at eight days in. It was a Bible. So he thought he would get a little intellectual and pick it up and just kind of read through it. It was just another book on the shelf to him, but he just thought he'd get into it. So anyway, he was there smoking his dope and getting into it. And his twin brother was back in there, and his, she had fallen asleep, and uh, that Bible become fascinating to him. He saw in there something amazing to him. He never seen it before. Of course, he never even read before. <laughs> Until we got out of high school, we never even read the books. And, and, and for him to read a, even pick up a book to read it, you know I was a miracle from God. So anyway, I was coming through there, and he found something very strange to him. He saw that his twin brother was living in sin with that girl there. And that fascinated him. 
but he hadn't seen as yet the beam that was in his eye. The Lord hadn't read him through his scriptures yet, but he saw mine. So I was walking through the room, and my twin brother said, Claiborne, let me read you a little something out of the Bible. I said, man, I don't want to hear that. He said, no, just let, let me read you a little scripture out of the Bible. I said, so I thought to myself, well, just to get him off the back, I'll go over and let him read me every what he got to read. So I sat down beside him, and he read me a scripture out of that Bible. You know, the Bible says that word of God is like a sword. It pierces, and it divides your soul in asunder, and it cuts everything in there. Well, that word hit my heart, and I didn't want to let him know it affected me, so I just got up and I walked out of another room. When that word hit in my heart, God spoke to my heart. God told me, he said, you've been unfaithful to me. He reversed my ex-wife unfaithfulness to my unfaithfulness to him. He said, you've been unfaithful to me. And that repented in my heart, and I went in the other room, and I fell on my knees, and I, I started to cry out to God. And when I did, I just felt like some kind of power would just come all over me. I never heard whether they be in a Holy Ghost, but I was feeling a Holy Ghost. <coughs> Praise God. So I came back in there. I was a shaking and trembling all over. And my, I felt like electricity was flying through me. And I just told my twin brother, I said, man, I feel like I could just point something. It raised up. It was that Holy Ghost fire. He said, man, you want me to take you to the doctor? I said, no, we got to turn from sin. And we got to start trying to get that girl in there like a sister in the Lord. I'm not sure if I use that word, but that's what we started trying to do the next morning, trying to make our first convert. Praise God. And then I said one time before, she wasn't too convertible. So anyway, we all eventually had to go our own directions. Anyway, my twin brother was dating a Catholic girl down in the, on the coast and was on the Hattiesburg, and uh, Rayburn was out walking his dog one day, and we started praying for understanding, truth, and wisdom. We were so naughty to that Bible, we first went into the Old Testament. And then we looked over and said, look at here. This is new. This is the old one. Let's look in the new one. <laughs> and I was grateful because I started seeing all those things in there. I was kind of getting a little nervous about the things that the Lord was wanting in the Old Testament. So anyway, as we got into the new, we used we felt a release. Anyway, my twin brother was out walking his dog, and we had an Afghan dog, and Rayburn was out walking his dog, and, and he come dragging that dog back to the house, and he said, the Lord just spoke to me. I said, what did he say? Well, anyway, it was a divine revelation, and we never heard it preached, but he said, the Lord had told me that we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He said that. And we thought we was the only one that had that revelation. At this time. Well, we thought everybody understood that. So Rayburn said, I'm dating a Catholic girl down there in Hattiesburg. Let's just go and get the priest to baptize us. I've been down to the priest before. So we went down there to see the priest. And it was me and my twin brother. And at this time, me and Rayburn's hair was way down to here. And it was streaked blonde. And we was extremely skinny because we were so much on them drugs. <coughs> So anyway, that priest saw us walking in the door, and I think he must have had almost a heart attack. So anyway, we asked him to baptize in the name of Jesus. We understood that we were wanting to be identified with him into his death, burial, and resurrection. And he said, well, do y'all want to join the uh, Catholic Church? We said, no, sir. We want to join Jesus. So anyway, uh, it, it confused him, and it confused us, and he said, well, y'all don't need to be baptized again, and then he answered the phone, and he said, this is Father so-and-so, and we'd been in the Bible for about three months, and we saw already in the Bible that that wasn't scriptural, for the Bible says, Jesus said, don't call no man father upon this earth, and there he was calling himself a father. So we went out there confused. So anyway, uh, my Raymond's girlfriend had us a big Catholic Bible, thought we were going to get in the Catholic faith. She said, y'all mean that you've been studying that Bible along with three or four months now and you think you know more than a Catholic priest? Raven said, I'm not saying we know more than a Catholic priest. 
We just did get out of high school. But do you remember those apostles? They were dumb and unlearned men. Sometimes that's what it takes to be dumb and unlearned. And we weren't too far from there already. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Rayburn said, well, I don't say we know more than he does. But we do know he's not going by the Bible. <laughs> so anyway, the Lord led us to an all. It was the strangest thing. We was in a prejudiced Mississippi. And we was going through the projects one day. We were just playing in the clubs. And we said, there's a church over there. Let's just see how they baptize. We was going through every denomination you could think of. And we felt like we was, we must have been going crazy and everything. So anyway, my, we went in there. And to our surprise, we opened the door. And, and we looked in there. And it was an all-black church. One of them sanctified kind. So anyway, they, they, that's how they believed. And they just started the church that morning. And, and they had church. <laughs> Praise God. And he took us out to the pond and identified us in his death burial and resurrection praise God we're going to feature my twin brother on the harmonica you know what really confused me and not confused me but what really got me mad after I came to the Lord is to I realized that the devil had us deceived all those years and was in those clubs and I told my twin brother one day I said Rayburn I said the devil is controlling the people in the world he said don't be saying that we always thought the devil was somewhere underneath the ground. But he's, I told him, I said, Rayburn, the devil is working through all these people. So anyway, we got in that club one night and we realized something. We saw one of our friends over there and he started telling the other brother, he said, I'm going to kill you. And the other guy said, I'm going to kill you. And they, everybody had to hold him back. We started easing back. We remembered that scripture. Jesus said, forgive them because they know not what they do. And we started realizing that the devil was controlling the whole world. And you know, we're going to do a song that's called Highway to Heaven. And there's a guy who wrote a song called Highway to Hell. And all the kids are singing along with that. And they were singing, we happy to be on the highway to hell. But if they go to hell for one moment, they'd, they'd change their mind. And the very guy that wrote that died in the backseat of his car, overdosed on drugs and alcohol, and died on his own vomit. If he came back, do you think he'd tell you to be on the highway to hell? Praise God. Let's get excited because we're going to feature my twin brother all the way from Mississippi on the Mississippi Blues Harmonica. Raven Huff. <laughs> Yeah. 
Rio.
Our next song is our other brother over here on the keyboards and Claiborne's twin brother, Rayburn Huff. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. So good to be here tonight. I just feel such a great spirit here. And I just thank God for his great mercy. And I just thank, thank the pastor here for having us here because I tell you, it's really a, sometimes when you have a different approach, sometimes it takes somebody like Peter to step out on the water. <laughs> And I thank the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. You know, I thought about how that James, I mean, it was Peter and John went up to the temple. And when they went up to the temple, there was a man that was lame there. And, and they went by and he was begging alms. And he, they said, look on us. And he looked at them. And the Bible says he looked on them expecting something. And I hope everybody here is expecting something tonight from God. I believe that's the key to it. We've got to be expecting something. And I believe we're expecting something, we're going to receive something. And the greatest thing could ever happen in anybody's life is to receive eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. But think about as it was in the days of Noah. The Bible has prophesied some things to happen in the ends of the world. We see prophecy in our own lives coming to pass. 
in our generation. And you know, the Bible says that knowledge would increase, and we see knowledge increasing. We see earthquakes in diverse places. We see all the things that's happening that's according to God's word that's coming upon the face of the earth. And God is going to save a remnant of his people out of this world of doom. As it was in the days of Noah, God had an escape plan for his people. And he wouldn't leave us today without an opportunity to be saved as it was in the days of Noah. As it was in the days of Noah, there was only one way out of the world. There was only one way to be saved. They had to come through the door and that one righteous man upon the face of the earth and there was only one family that was saved. And there will only be one family in the ends of the world saved and that would be the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. No religion is going to do it. Only Jesus is going to do it. But as it was in the days of Noah, the people who loved sin stayed in the world. And I just wonder tonight if there's people who say, well, some of these days I'm going to serve God. And the other people say, well, I don't believe I have to do all that to be saved. I believe I can still smoke my pot and have sex with my girlfriend, drink a little wine. I don't think I'll go to hell for that. If you're still in the world, you're still in your sins. As it was in the days of Noah, the people who came out of the world were saved. But the people who stayed in that world died in that world. And tonight, if you're in your sins and you think you're saved, you're not in the ark of God. For the apostle said, he that committed sin is of the devil, and the devil won't enter heaven. But as it was in the days of Noah, the chosen people of God came out from among the world. And I pray tonight that there'll be people here tonight that will make that stand. They'll stand up among their friends and say, I'm not going to hell, I'm going to heaven. I believe tonight we're going to have people here that will come and give their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I believe with all my heart, as the Lord Jesus said, For as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Noah! It's never going to rain! You're crazy, Noah. Everybody's talking about you Noah Haven't you better things to do Many years we watched you here Still you say the flood is near Don't look like rain today It's just another sunny day We've been working for a long, long time No, I, I believe in you have lost your mind Come on down, the weather's fine We live in our bed, drink some wine Don't look like rain today It's just another sunny day Seven days, it's gonna rain for forty days and nights. Who are you to tell me that? I don't believe I'll have to see myself. No, I. You've really done it this time. No, I. Lordy creatures of every kind Two by two you load them up While I drink another cup Don't look like rain today It's just another sunny day Oh you're saying seven days It's gonna rain for forty days Tell me that I don't believe I'll have to save myself. No, I. Everybody's talking about you. No, I. Haven't 
every head is bowed while every eye is closed if there would be no talking or no moving just for a moment please Lord Jesus we know you're in the midst and Lord whenever you're in the midst you're doing great things you're setting people free you're showing people your love. And Lord, I know there's people here that needs to feel loved. Somebody needs to feel wanted. And nobody can make them feel like that except you, Jesus. Lord, for every heart that needs a special touch, I ask you, through the power of the Holy Ghost, that you would accomplish that, Lord. I know you're mighty and you're great. And Lord, we want to bind the ever evil force of the devil. In Jesus' name. The Bible says, in that day, the sun will be darkened. The moon won't give her light. The stars are going to fall from heaven. And the very powers of heaven will be shaken. And then, where do you stand? If this was the last night, Jesus' name, for every person that's here tonight, that you're not sure where you're going to go. There's somebody standing close to you. Maybe you invited a friend. It's no time to have pride. It's time to let all the walls down. And it's time to get close to God. I believe there's people here tonight that you're chosen of God. You will never be the same ever again. You'll never, ever be the same ever again because of what God 
is going to do in your life. Right now, all over this building, in the balcony, God is reaching for somebody. He loves you. Would you step out right now? Be a man. It takes a real man to serve God. Anybody can serve the devil, but it takes a real man to serve God. Would you invite a friend to come right now all over this building? Let's pray. Let's believe God right now for a great outpouring of His Spirit. Come, friend, ever who you are, ever who you are, God loves you. Whosoever will, come. Hallelujah. There's at least 50 people in here. The Lord is waiting on you right now. And there's even more that He knows you're going to walk out the door. He knows you're going to walk out the door. Come right now. Hallelujah. Come on, let's all keep praying. There's needs here in this building. Hallelujah. People have fasted and prayed for this night. And God is honoring it. God is honoring it. He's going to honor it. Hallelujah. Keep on praying. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. Come to Jesus. Bring all your troubles right now. Bring all your problems to Him. He can help you like nobody else can help you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Backslider, come home. It's not too late yet. The door is still open. Hallelujah. Let's pray, church. Let's really intercede right now. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Ever who comes first, God's got something special for you. When you come, then there's going to be many others to come. Who's going to be first? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the balcony, come on. God bless you, brother. Oh, that's right. That's the way you do it. The devil is defeated. He's such a big liar. God's going to fill people here with the Holy Ghost. Oh, God bless you. We love you. Invite somebody to come right now. There's many people in here that needs to come. Brothers, y'all come on up closer. Oh, God's got a miracle for you. If you'll step out, God bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Peter said, repent. First thing you do is say, I'm sorry, Lord. Hallelujah. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. There's at least 25 more people. You need to come. God bless my brothers. Hallelujah, brothers. We love you. That's all right. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We need some saints of God to come here and work with these people in the altar. Some don't know how to pray. We need to show them. Hallelujah. We need to lead them to the, to the cross. Hallelujah. Come on right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He's here right now. He's here right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Keep on coming. Oh, hallelujah. Keep on. In the balcony, come on. Praise God. Dim the lights, please. Praise God. Praise God. Dim the light at him. Praise God. Come on. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh. Praise God. to get closer to God, would you step forward right now? You say, I already know the Lord, but I want to get closer. Would you come right now? Would you come right now? Oh, that's right. Come, brothers and sisters. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise
contigo Oh, aleluya to fill every person with the Holy Ghost. You need to be calling on Jesus to work out every situation in their life. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We need people that knows how to pray. You need, we need people. We've got young men down here giving their hearts to Jesus. Just ask God. Just lift your hands up to God right now. Say, Jesus, I love you. And I'm so sorry for everything that I've done against you, Father. I'm sorry for every sin that I've committed. And I want you to wash me in the blood of the Lamb. There's a great deep move of repentance going on right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, we can worship the Lord better than that. We can praise Him better than that. Hallelujah. This is what David and the Giants have come to Fredericton for. They didn't come to put on a show. They come to see this go on. People's lives change. Young men and young lady walk down the aisles and say, Jesus, I want to live for you. I want to give my life to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We need people to move through this crowd and lay hands on these people. The Bible says they laid hands on them and they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. They spoke in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. Come on, move through this crowd and begin to pray. Teach these people how to pray. Teach them how to call on Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to live for you, Jesus. I'm going to live for you, Jesus. I'm making up my mind tonight, God. I'm fixing my heart on you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just praise Him. Let the Holy Spirit have the way. Let it have its way right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Lift your hands and wave it. Sing praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, oh praise God. 
Ghost right now. The Holy Ghost is the gift that God gives you. All you have to do is say, Lord, I receive the Holy Ghost right now. And He'll fill you with it immediately. Hallelujah. Well, praise Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Give him a round of applause. Hallelujah. 